ASME B3020 requires you to inspect your plate clamps. A faulty clamp could cause a lot of damage, injury, or even death. In this video, we'll show you how to perform a clamp inspection. My name is Ben, and this is the Lifting and Rigging Channel. Today, we're back at Caldwell Lifting Solutions headquarters in Rockford, Illinois, to find out what rejection criteria we need to look for when inspecting a plate clamp, and how to properly inspect one. Engineering manager Dale Kelly will help walk us through. So, let's get into it. ASME 3020 is the operator's guideline for clamps inspections, and it determines the frequency of the inspections and the type of inspections. It also identifies certain requirements for the tag, marking, and proof test. The BTH-1 is what the factory uses to design the clamps to ensure that the clamp meets certain safety standards. The following inspections are required for clamps per ASME standards. The initial inspection, the every lift inspection, both pre-lift and post-lift, the frequent inspection, and finally, the periodic inspection which is the only written inspection that's required. Each inspection is determined by the service class. Clamps are rated by their usage. They have a normal, a heavy, and a severe duty class. For the heavy and severe service classes, they differ from the normal service classes and occur at more frequent intervals. During your clamp inspection, you'll be looking for the following items that are cause for rejection. Illegible tags, if the working load limit is not legible, the jaw opening, or the manufacturer's name, the tag must be rejected and the clamp removed from service. Other items are bent pins and worn and elongated holes, and primarily dull teeth. Other items are loose body bolts, worn shackles, damaged or chipped teeth, damaged or non-existent springs and lock handles, cracks in the welds, body distortions, grinding or modifying that clamp in any manner other than by the manufacturer. All of these items are cause for rejection and could pose a problem for the operator. In order to perform a proper inspection, it helps for the inspector to know how a clamp works and some of the components that are contained within the clamp. We have this clamp here with a clear side to help us demonstrate how a clamp works. The shackle line, you have a yoke, you have a cam strap assembly, spring, the lock handle, the cam assembly, the cam, the swivel jaw, and of course the appropriate pins and hardware when operating your clamp, you place it on the plate and lock the handle so that the spring is engaged. This stretches the spring and it pushes the teeth up against the plate. When you apply the load, it pulls upward on the shackle, which is connected to the cam strap, which engages the cam and pulls even harder. It's like the old Chinese finger. The harder you pull, the tighter the grip. When performing an inspection, the operator should check the following. Are the, are the tags legible? He should be able to read the model, the serial number, the tonnage, and the jaw opening, and who the manufacturer was. If this tag is illegible, he should reject the clamp. The next thing he'll want to look at is the shackle eye. Is it worn or damaged in any matter? 10% worn, and it should be rejected. You want to make sure that the clamp operates smoothly by sliding the shackle in and out. You want to check for bent pins by spinning them. If they can't spin, they're bent and they'll lock up on you. You want to check for elongation of the holes. Make sure there's no movement. You want to check that your teeth are sharp. Both sides, both the swivel jaw 
and the cam joint. You want to make sure the lock handle operates properly and that there's no damage existing to the spring. The next thing you want to do is check the body. You want to look for the, the shape of the body to make sure it's not distorted or there are any cracks in the welds and the body bolts are tight. Loose bolts are an indication the clamp has been shock loaded. So if they are loose, that's also a cause for rejection. If all these criteria are met, a clamp is suitable for use and you may proceed with your lift. Now that we've looked at a good clamp, let's take a look at a bad clamp. I happen to have this one right here that's seen some service. As you'll notice, it's been used quite extensively. It's been welded on, which is immediate cause for rejection. This modifies the metallurgy of the clamp and could damage it. So right there off the bat, you should reject this clamp. Moving forward, for the sake of our inspection, let's look at some of the other items. The shackle looks pretty worn. You notice how thin it is. Normally any clamp that exceeds 10% wear should be rejected. The lock handle is also damaged. The ring is missing, as well as the spring internally has been stretched. The lock bolt has been replaced with a different type of bolt. That's another problem. We, sh we shouldn't do that. The teeth are dull, and you can tell as they reflect light back at the surface. So this clamp has many issues. It's been abused, it's, it's been drug across the floor to the point where the body has been distorted and worn. One of the good features though, is the pin still in shape, which shows you the ruggedness of a Renfro clamp. I have another clamp here that's also been modified. This clamp here, this is the same as this clamp, it's just a smaller version, but the customer has put a different handle. And you might ask, well, what's that have to do with it? Well, in times past, this handle could actually get caught down inside the clamp mechanism and jam the clamp up. We have had incidences where customers have replaced the handles, they get jammed up and they go over and make a lift and the clamp comes disengaged from the plate. So that's a cause for rejection. This clamp should be took out of service and repaired and restored back to the original condition before returning to service. In years past, we put together some examples of parts that have been pulled from service out of clamps that have failed their inspection. These are the barrel slides. As you'll note, they've been severely worn. These are used on the inside of the clamp where the shackle slides and supports the shackle and the cam strap. Over time, these will wear. That's cause for rejection. Here's another example of that. And as you can see, it's pretty well worn. These should be removed from the clamp, replaced with new ones. Here is a sleeve that looks fairly new and could be reused. That's what it should look like. All right. Let's talk about dull teeth. I have several types of teeth here. As you can see, the light reflects back at you. And it's obvious that this is a worn tooth. That can cause the clamp to slip when it's trying to engage the plate. Here's an example of a round tooth, and you can see how sharp and clean it looks. That's a good tooth as compared to this one and the dullness. Okay. I have a couple other examples of chip teeth on this one. Here's a couple of shackles that have shown severe wear in the shackle eye area. They've exceeded 10% and were rejected. Also, you notice that the hole was elongated. This is another sign of either wear or overloading. In both cases, this shackle should be rejected and replaced. Sometimes in the application, the operators will use a screwdriver to try to open the clamp with. When they do that, they unknowingly damage the spring. This spring has been damaged by the use of a screwdriver as compared to what a good spring should look like. Nice, nice and smooth, no miscontinuities, no gouges, and all intact and uniform. Another example, a little more harder to catch, is the inside of the clamp. I cut this clamp apart so you could see the actual details of it, why it was rejected. 
During the operation, the operator noticed that the shackle slide wouldn't slide in and out. As you can see, the shackle must slide smoothly in and out for the clamp to operate properly. This pin there slides in and out of this slot. If this is worn from constant use on a plate of similar thickness, it'll actually wear a dimple and become hard to slide in and out because it'll hit that recess and then the pin will lock up. It could give our operator a false sense of security thinking his clamp's actually engaged, when in fact it's not. And then when he goes to lift the plate and turn straight up, it could slide out and cause the plate to fall out of the clamp. As you can see, these are some of the many rejections that we see from doing our inspections. These parts were caught with the every lift, the frequent, or the periodic. All of these were rejects that caused the clamp to be removed from service for repair, and they should be replaced before the clamp can be put back into service. All repairs must be performed by a qualified technician. All clamps must be repaired using Renfro parts for a Renfro clamp. It must meet all the requirements as though the clamp were new. You need to inspect the clamp after repair. It is not necessary to proof test. However, many of our customers require proof testing, so we provide a proof test and copy of certification for every new Renfro clamp. In addition, any clamp that is repaired by Renfro is also proof tested and provide with that same certification. If you want more information, you can contact Caldwell or Mozilla's Lifting and Rigging Division. The links are in the description below. If you think we missed something, or if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and Dale or I will find you an answer. I hope after watching this video, you feel confident that you can properly perform an inspection and recognize what rejection criteria would require a clamp to be pulled from service. If you found this video useful, informative, entertaining, or you just feel like being friendly, then hit that like button so we can get this information out to everyone who needs it. Subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a video. My name is Ben, and I'll see you in the next one.